Britain's star batter, Mion de Priya, says she experienced a roller coaster of emotions in her side's thrilling final ball victory over India in Christchurch earlier today. De Priya's 52 knots out from 63 balls saw South Africa home by three wickets as she dispatched the game's final ball to the mid wicket fence to see her side chase down 275 runs for victory. The Proteas will play England in semi finals this Thursday. I think it was, uh, I think the best word would be a roller coaster ride. Um, there's lots of ups and downs. Um, yeah, I think myself and Kapi was going really well, so we kind of knew that between the two of us, if we can take it as deep as possible, we know what Chloe can do. And um, I mean, as soon as Chloe came in, she made it look quite easy. Um, and then getting out again, you know, it's, it's like you mentioned, it just goes up and down all the time. Um, but yeah, I, I mentioned it in the first match. It was really quite, I didn't know that it was noble. So obviously felt like that I'd let the team down because um, I could have probably, we only needed a run a ball. Um, so I could have probably just tried to hit it on the ground. It didn't go where I wanted. I wanted. I was targeting straight over the bowler's head and I dragged it a little. But um, yeah, got a little bit of luck on my side finally. I haven't felt like that I had luck throughout the tournament just yet. Um, so I got a little bit of luck and I mean, um, it was quite special to be there at the end then and, and to get over the line. Well, joining us now to speak about the pool stage performance of the South African woman, as well as looking ahead to the semi-final against England, I'm joined by AOL Sports reporters, here Adams. A very good evening and welcome to Newsroom Africa once again. Good evening, Merlin. How are you? Fantastic. So what a performance from the South African woman and they've really been leaving us for right to the death in all of their matches, haven't they? Definitely. It's... Uh as uh, Mignon said, a roller coaster ride every single game. It's on the edge. Uh, definitely aged a few years over the last couple of weeks with this Pro Tears women's side. But a fantastic result in the end. And uh, looking forward to uh, a rematch of the 2017 semi final on Thursday against England. Before we actually speak about going up against England and that semi-final, let's speak a little bit about this round-robin phase because after the very first match, we heard the coach of the side say, we haven't quite reached our best. It doesn't look, though, as if they have yet reached their best. You've had a couple of fantastic performances which have seen the team over the line, but are we going to see this team all firing at the same time? Because that's what it's going to take if they are to go through to the final. Definitely, I think uh, there were there were some tense moments throughout the throughout the campaign, whether it was Bangladesh, Pakistan, New Zealand, and even that England game. There were always, and again, uh, this morning against India, there's just uh, those moments that uh, are letting them down in crucial areas. But uh, they managed to get through, they get over the line, and that's a, a crucial aspect of tournament cricket, particularly if we know the history of pro tiers at the World Cup, and uh, to get to, to squeeze out those those victories, to get over the line in the in those really pressurized encounters. But I was really um, excited by what I saw today. It was uh, particularly from Mignon Dupree. She was struggling uh, during the tournament, but she's found a little bit of form with the half century. And also that, that crucial number three position that's been troubling. And uh, Laura Goodall, she came in and she played a fantastic innings as well. She got 49. So it looks like all the everything is geared to peaking at the right times in the playoffs. You speak about peaking at the right times. What about a team like England? They came into the tournament. They're the defending champions. They had three defeats on the trot. That defeat against uh, South Africa in the round-robin phase was their last defeat because then they've gone on to win their last four matches, which now we find them in the semi-finals. They are a team that has got some good momentum behind them. I definitely. I think England have always been a, a world-class outfit. They uh, they, they, they're still the world champions, we have to remember. They, uh, they won a fantastic uh, final five years ago at Lords, and, uh, and if you remember also against, England, against South Africa in the semi-final, um, they're definitely finding form. Sophie Eccleston, she's been fantastic with the ball, and these senior players are starting to find some form as well. Um, remember, they, they've been on the road for a long time. They were in Australia before that for the Ashes and really suffered a couple of tough losses there, and they seem to put that behind them and that and are gearing up for the semi-final. I do think those South Africa have the quality, they have the ability. They also have the belief, having beaten England in the previous, in the, the league round, to, to, pull off a, to pull off a stunning victory coming up. When we came into the tournaments, however, we played a warm-up game against England, and we lost it in 35 overs. I think that's a very, very long time ago, Bale, and I think uh, South Africa lost both their warm-up games. They, they lost to India as well, if you remember, and uh, we saw today, it's a, 
I think that's uh, you know I have the, the belief that you don't want to play your best cricket in the in the warm up games. Uh, I remember Laura Wolfa, she failed in the one of the warm up games as well, and she's just been fantastic for the Proteas at the top of the order. She's the top run scorer now in the World Cup. So to me, that that's a that's a very long time ago. I think uh, it's a new ball it's a new ball game on Thursday. Even we we shouldn't even speak about what happened in 2017 because uh, firmly I believe that this South African team since then has grown in leaps and bounds. Unfortunately, the neighbor Nikek, the inspirational captain, she won't be. She's not she has, she's not with the side, and she was there obviously there five years ago. But this team has just grown so much over this last couple of weeks in New Zealand. They've taken confidence from getting over the line in, the, in, in these really tough encounters. And we've had some really great performances from a number of different people in the team. Uh, Sinelius has been fantastic as a standing captain and a number of the players that have actually addressed the media following their matches have spoken about just how instrumental Sine has been in leading the team in Danae's absence. What is it about this team? Because they really do seem as if they're a really gelled unit. Whenever they address the media, they just... They, you feel confidence in the South African women's cricket team? The, Sine, Sine has been unbelievable uh, in just the way she's accepted the responsibility. It's, uh, I think Donna has probably got the biggest shoes in women's cricket to pull. And, uh, and they're quite different characters. Uh, so Donna is quite abrasive. She's quite uh, forthright in her, in, her, in her opinions and her attitudes. And, and, Dev, and generally leads from the front where Sine is a lot quieter. She's a lot more, uh, she's more about the collective and, and and gathering information around her, but the way she's um, she's taken on the role, and also the way it's uh, just uh, helped her batting, she's she's been fantastic with the bat, and that's been a real boost for South Africa for her to just step in at number four and, and make the contributions that she has, the the partnership she puts on with Laura Wolfe, it just settles that team and it allows the middle order to play the way they do, uh, the likes of Marazan Cup, Chloe Tryon, Mignon Dupree, and and but Sunay Sunay is just. Uh, She's calm. That's the that's the one thing. If you listen to all the players speak about it, she's calm. She's 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 articulate. She thinks about what she wants to do, and it's it's really been uh, a, just a joy to watch her go about the business in the, And that's possibly helped the process, the younger players especially deal with the, the pressures of a World Cup because the, the pressures are now intense. It's, it's knockout stages. It's a it's a game that South Africa have been working towards for five years. It's a fair day to destiny. How difficult is it going to be against England? This is a team that, as a South African ODI unit, we've played the most. Out of 39 matches in this format, we've only won nine. So although it's a very settled unit, it's not going to be easy. Definitely. I think uh, I don't think we should look at the, the record over the, over the entire period because that's uh, when South African cricket started, women's cricket particularly, it was... It was entirely an amateur setup. It was uh, it was basically um, uh, uh, basically a recreational sport playing against professionals. Where since that World Cup in 2017, the Cricket South Africa have invested quite quite heavily in the in the women's game, and and they're all now professionals. Uh, plenty of those that Proteas women's side play in England's hundred competition. They play in the Big Bash in Australia, so they've matured greatly since then. So in terms of the recent record, I think. Uh, um, South Africans, I think for the first time they will have the belief that they can beat this England side. It's going to be unbelievably hard. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's going to be a massive, massive encounter. And it could possibly once again go down to those one or two last balls at the end and, and possibly needing somebody like Marazan Cup to, to, to come to the fore like she has all throughout the tournament. But I think this, this South African team quietly believe they can do it. They, uh, they believe that they have the potential. They've done it before in this World Cup. And it's, it's, I would even say they, they it would even, you could even say they are the favourites, uh, surprisingly, for the semi final. Yeah, well, on paper, they certainly are. They're number two in the world in the 50 over format. So, here, Adam, thank you so much for chatting to us here on Newsroom Africa. We do look forward to that semi final. It is South Africa up against England, that match taking place on Thursday in the early hours of the morning.